Good morning, gamers. Guess who's back? For real though, thanks as always for all the support on the last video. I think all the engagement actually helped it reach a larger audience, so I really appreciate it. And thank you for waiting for me to make this one. Also, you should go leave a nice comment on Hydra's remix that you're hearing in the intro because it's pretty cool and they allowed me to use it. All right, now let's do what I do at the start of the video. So I make a big intro scene. Ori in the Blind Forest, or Ori, as I'll be shortening it to for the rest of the video, is a game that most people think of really fondly, and a friend got it for me back in 2018, which was five years ago. Feel old? Because I do, and like, people born in 2010 are in middle school now? Anyway, needless to say, I played it for like an hour on a really crappy laptop five years ago, so... I really remember pretty much nothing about the game. If everyone else seems to like the game so much, I mean, it must be worth a shot, but... What's the game like for somebody that's never played it before? Like me. I'll spoil it for you a little bit here though. The game is super, super new player friendly. At least if you play it on normal difficulty like I did. Also, keep in mind, per usual, that this is just my own personal interpretation of the game after playing through it for the first time. I have little to no knowledge about it, I've never seen a run of the game, and I try and go into it without any preconceived notions or expectations. That also means that any of the information or knowledge that I bring forward in the video could be incorrect or at least a bit misguided. So please try and take it with a grain of salt and just interpret it as my first view of the game as a first time player. If I do get something horribly wrong, you could totally leave a comment and I'll maybe like it, maybe even pin it if it's good and that way other new players can see it too. Before we get started, I usually like to answer the question of should you play the game blind? In the case of Ori, I'd say you definitely should. In fact, I think there's little to no reason not to. The game is short, sweet, and it's really kind to new players. I'll break that down throughout the video, but for now, just know that it's my recommendation that you play through the game completely blind without any kind of guide or having seen the game beforehand. Lastly, these are my YouTube stats. It makes sense as a new channel, and I really appreciate that pretty much everybody that subscribed has watched every video so far, likely this one included, but I'd love to get 500 subs for my birthday later this month. I think that would be really cool, and it would be great to see this number go up a bit. So if you like the other videos or you end up liking this one, don't forget to subscribe because I will be making more. All right, see if I remember how to do this. Starting out, you're treated to a lovely cinematic introduction where you see the origin of Ori, the creature you're playing as, and their loving mother figure. You watch the forest of Nibel, or as I like to call it, Nibel, fall into disrepair and ruin because of an evil bird, and you're subsequently directed to bring life back to it before even you fade away in the harsh wasteland. The voices of the characters aren't spoken in an intelligible tongue, but the gravity of the tree's words are powerful, and I think the sound designer did a great job. In terms of a tutorial, similar to many Metroidvanias, it's very simple. At the moment, you don't really have many abilities or movement options, and it'll just teach you about them when you get them. The world seems cold and desolate, with occasional enemies to face and a couple of obstacles as you dance around the strange landscape. In the intro sequence, you feel a bit like a slug, but in terms of movement, after that, it feels like you're a floating wisp, like an ethereal creature waving around to and fro. It does feel slippery, and it's a bit hard to control, especially coming from Hollow Knight, where the movement's really tight and responsive. That being said though, it does kind of shock you just how agile you are having come out of the intro, where your movement is really crippled and slow. So at least initially it feels really good. Eventually when you do unlock more movement abilities, it makes you feel really cool, especially the bash, which allows you to get to interesting places, save yourself from dangerous mobs, and all around be kind of a badass. Something of note is that I played through the definitive edition, and I think there are a few added abilities you can get in this version, such as like a dash that allows the movement to feel a bit better and makes you feel cooler and faster if nothing else. They're not required for beating the normal game as far as I know, but don't quote me on that. You quickly make your way to the sunken glades, finding an impassable barrier of spiky ball growths and venture onwards to find some glowy thing that talks to you. It's revealed that they're called Saint and are some kind of fragment of the tree that you came from. This unlocks the basic attack of the game and starts you on your journey to growing stronger by killing monsters, getting experience, and unlocking upgrades on a skill tree. You get to test out what you can break, what you can kill, and what everything does. 
Looking around, you also find one of many well-placed and relatively frequent fast travel points, which, as you unlock more areas, will lead you between your newfound environments. Speaking of the environments, the areas are all relatively unique, and they are beautiful to boot. The whole game feels cinematic, and the music is gorgeous and symphonic. It kind of brings everything together. Once you begin clearing the main objectives of the game, you begin to see how your actions are shaping the world around you. The game leads you onwards to beautiful water areas where if you're me, you can get really nervous about drowning. Or maybe it's a windy bluff where you can soar to your heart's content. You find little nooks and crannies with upgrades or experience. You never find yourself clipping on terrain in an awkward or unpleasant way. And it's an all around enjoyable experience to explore the world around you. The game is filled with puzzles, I guess you could call them, which are generally pretty easy, but they're rewarding to complete. There's an obligatory dark area, there's some kind of ancient civilization with strange technology, and everywhere you look there's some interesting obstacle to jump past or mastermind your way through. One thing you'll notice quickly though, is that as you wander around and unlock the abilities you need to get to new places, your attack power, though you may have an expanded repertoire of tools at your disposal, seems to go down significantly with each new area and you have to choose between quality of life upgrades or damage upgrades. I don't mind difficulty spikes, and honestly it felt necessary because once you're used to the basic enemy patterns, they are quite easy to avoid, even if it takes a few extra hits to kill them. So it didn't feel too bad. I realize now I could have explored for more secrets actively searching for them instead of letting myself find them accidentally or in a more natural way, but many of them are in places you can't yet reach in classic Metroidvania fashion. Once I did get the damage upgrades though, they felt so good that I regretted not getting them as soon as I possibly could have. Though, I think having a more diversified skill tree passing was probably for the best and made my experience more rounded. I think however that most of the abilities on the skill tree are worth getting and they all feel as if they have some useful impact on your gameplay experience. So going one way or the other doesn't really make too much of a difference in the end. As long as you look around a little bit, you'll probably make your way through most of the skill tree and get many of the perks if not almost all of them by the end of the game, so it doesn't really matter, but it can improve quality of life here and there when you need it. As you may know, I am the worst when it comes to being directionally challenged in video games. Luckily though, the game does a really good job of actually showing you where you need to go, or putting down map markers via upgrades if you're looking for that kind of thing instead. Occasionally, when you're trying to get somewhere, you'll be dropped into a location where you actually can't get out of it without the upgrade that's a little bit further down the path. So, inevitably, you're directed towards the correct place. There is also a big glowing circle on the map for your next main objective, so it's hard to go too far astray. As long as you go in the general direction that you think would be natural to get to that place, you're likely going to find the spot that you need to be in. The skill tree also allows you, as I said, to unlock map markers, which will point you in the direction of health upgrades, energy upgrades, and even the fast travel points. Early on, it's a little difficult to have enough energy or find some energy so that you can save your game. So sometimes you end up having to traverse relatively large distances on the low HP, low mobility that you have at the start of the game. And that can feel pretty painful sometimes, but it's really only for the first hour or two and then you get enough energy reserves that you feel as if you can save pretty much whenever you want. I ran into one instance in the cold puzzle area where I had no way to get more energy, and if I wanted to progress, I was probably going to have to do most of the puzzle without being able to save. So, do it in one shot. Other than the start of the game though, and that one instance, it really was not an issue. So, in general, I think it's pretty forgiving. All in all, it's almost difficult to get lost. Given that you can unlock map fragments which reveal an entire area's map, aside from the secret locations, and when you pair that with the map indicators, you really have no trouble at all getting from one place to the next as you work your way around. There came a point where I decided I needed to find more of the secret upgrades before moving on, but with the map indicators and I already had most of the movement options unlocked at that point, it was easy to get around and go from my 6 HP up to 10, increase as much energy as I wanted, and gain a handful of new upgrades via skill points. These upgrades significantly improved my experience in the final areas as I continued to progress through the final parts of the story. In terms of the story, seeing as Ori attempts to be a narrative experience, the story is super easy to follow, and at no point are you wondering why things are going the way they are. The bird hates the light of the tree, 
and you have to restore the elements of the forest back to their normal glory so the forest stops being so dead and sad, and you're a fragment of the tree's light that's going to carry it all out. Usually in games, if you want to get to a new area or progress through the story, you have to fight a boss. But in Ori, there are no boss fights. That's because the monsters around you are not really the main objective or obstacle restoring the environment is. So instead, there are these honestly pretty cool escape sequences where once you've restored one of the elements to the forest, some kind of chaotic event takes place, and you need to use a newfound ability to get the hell out of there. It's a cool way to give you a boss fight-like experience without drawing attention away from the fact that restoring the light to nibble is your primary objective. In my opinion, the first escape sequence is the best one. You have to use what I found to be the defining movement mechanic of Ori, the bash, to get out of the now water-filled Ginso tree. You get to really see how cool and interesting the bash is going to make the game feel, and it's easy to tell where to head next during the sequence, so it really feels skill-based. That's not always the case, however. The second escape sequence seems designed so that you cannot complete it without already having died to the next obstacle. It feels a lot less rewarding to play, and the intended path is relatively unclear at first, with random objects falling that instantly kill you if you weren't aware they're gonna fall in the first place. Luckily though, the third and final escape sequence returns to being readable on sight, and you can make it through based on your movement skills instead of relying on prior knowledge like in the second. Once you make it through the final sequence, you get some lovely mother and child bonding moments, and you complete the game. Game, restoring the light of the tree to the forest. As I said earlier in the video, this game, in terms of its playability and the experience it will give a new player, is really good. The story is easy to follow, the movement makes you feel like a sneaky little ninja, and it's hard to get lost. Or if you're looking for upgrades because you feel weak, it's relatively easy to find where to go to get them. I'd rate the first time player experience for Ori and the Blind Forest a 9 out of 10. The movement is just a little too slippery to really feel good, at least at the start, when you don't have all the other movement options, and you still feel it a bit even near the end. But by that point you already have other things available to you, so it's not that big of a deal. The second escape sequence isn't fantastic, but other than that, the game really is incredible. The game took me 7 hours, 7 minutes, and 13 seconds to complete in its entirety, and these are my statistics right before I finished the final escape sequence. I'd recommend the game to anybody that likes having cool movement abilities, really likes interesting and beautiful environments, and just wants a short but sweet experience that you could even, if you wanted to, play entirely in one sitting. I ended up playing the game over three different sessions, each for just over two hours, one play session for each of the elements that I was restoring to the forest. If you're interested in seeing that full playthrough, they are all linked below in a playlist on my VODs channel. I really liked the game, and if you liked the video, I'd really appreciate if you left a like on it so that more people can see it. And maybe you could even leave a comment telling me what I should play next, or if there's anything that I could improve in my videos for future. I'll be making plenty more, and there are already two that you can go watch now if you're new to the channel. So hopefully you'll subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and want to see more like it because I will be putting them out. I'm also going to be posting a poll a couple of days after this video is released, so that the people that are subscribed can vote on what game I should play next. So if you see it, make sure you vote in it. I would really appreciate it. Lastly, I have a number of links in the description to socials such as my Twitch or my Twitter and the archive channel. So if you're interested in any kind of live content or you just want more updates on what's going on and kind of what to expect, you can find all of those there and go and give them a follow. As always, thank you so much for watching. I have been Lunin. Take care of yourselves. And with any luck, I will see you in the next video.